Good morning, Countryside, and welcome to everyone on this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. I would like to give a special welcome to any guest and would ask you if you could please sign one of the, or fill out one of the name tags that are on the back of the pew. And uh, if you could, that'll uh, enable us after the service to welcome you either in the narthex or the, the Founders Hall where we'll have uh, coffee and treats after. Also, please take a moment and sign the black book and pass it around to your neighbor. And please re reference the bulletin for upcoming events. One more reminder, food mission for the month of June is macaroni and cheese. Good morning. Jenny, you can come down and help me. This is Father's Day, and I wish every father a happy Father's Day today. And I couldn't think of what to buy to give to the oldest father here in worship today. I didn't think flowers were appropriate, but maybe that's me. So I decided to buy a carrot cake because I figured any father would enjoy having a carrot cake. I put a blue bow on it too. So I need to know, and Jenny's gonna help me with this, who the oldest father is. So do we have any fathers uh, happen to be 99? 98? 97? 96? 95? 94. I tried. Uh, 93. 92. 91. 90. Oh, now I'm into 89. How old? 89. You're going to have to split the cake then. <laughs> we've got a, Jenny, we got another one up here at 89 too, so I guess I'll have to split the cake. I have another announcement to make too. We had Vacation Bible School this past week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And for those that were in Vacation Bible School, we had a fantastic time, didn't we? Yeah. I enjoyed seeing men and women try to get a little white golf ball into a red cup to see if they could make a hole in one. That was great joy. And then we taught them how to play football to see if they could catch a football. That was fun, too. But we enjoyed singing. Kara did a fantastic job of putting songs together and um, putting the whole thing together. I think she had some helpers. Sharon helped, too. But she was a lead person, and I think she deserves a round of applause. But to show you all how much we enjoyed Vacation Bible School, we're going to have a song up here that we're going to sing. Am I correct, Tom? It's about sheep. Baba, he's the good shepherd everywhere I go. Savior, I will follow where he goes. Jesus loves me, finds me, cares for me, watches, saves me, leads back home. Baba, he's the good shepherd, everywhere I go he knows. Baba, he is my Savior. Oh 
Please stand and share the peace of Christ with those sitting around you. everybody first so they can do the prayer later okay yeah just have a seat yes could everyone please be seated I don't think this works could everyone please be seated
Would you please stand and join me in singing hymn number 645? Sing praise to God who reigns above and remain standing for the call to worship. How precious is human life? How precious is human love? With love comes death, the sweet release. With love comes pain, the sweetest remembrance. There is no life that has no death coursing through its veins. There is no love that has no pain running through its heart. So let us press out common pulse, quickening enemy and friend. Let us join hands with, with our joy, made bright with the shadow of death. And let us embrace our grief, made dark by the glory of life. Let us reach towards our ecstasy, made by the depth of our pain. And let us bend toward our despair, made deep by the height of love. We know that where, we, where there is joy and grief, God shall be there with sweet release. prayer of the day. Please join me. Our creator of this world, of every world that was or is or shall ever be, do not abandon us. Though our hands work harm and our lips speak lies, though we betray you with our body and our soul, do not forsake us. Weep over us and bless us. Please be seated. The scripture reading this morning comes from Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapters, hang on just a second here, I got too many sheets here. Samuel 15 through 34 and 16 verse 1 through, through 13. 
Then Samuel went to a wall, and Saul went to his house in Gibeath of Saul. Sam did not, Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord was sorry that he made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Samuel? I have rejected him from being king of Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to, to, send you to Jesse of Bethsemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Samuel hears of it, he will kill me. The Lord said, then, then a heifer you with you, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you should do, and you shall anoint him for the one whom I, I name in you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come to me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked at Elab and thought, Surely the Lord anointed, anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or his height of his stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see all the mortals see. And he looked at the outward appearance, and the Lord looks at our heart. Then Jesse asked Elabab this. Then Jesse made Shalemu bypass. And he said, neither, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made several of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all of your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, and he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and he was, had a beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, rise and anoint him. For this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mighty upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramal. Thus is the reading of the scriptures.
Thank you to the quartet. That's one of those songs when I hear it sung, I always have tears in my eyes. So, our gospel reading for today comes from the Gospel of Mark, the fourth chapter, beginning with the 26th verse. May we listen to the word. He also said, the kingdom of God, as as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, At once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? What parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The word of the Lord. Sowing in the morning. Sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest, the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. I'm sure many of you know that hymn, especially the first verse. I grew up singing that hymn many, many times. It's springtime, and Grandpa would say, it's time to go and dig up the dandelions. But I would say, Grandpa, they're beautiful yellow flowers. I love to see those yellow flowers. And I would say, but Grandpa, at home we would take something and spray on them and get rid of them because my father did not like them. He says, oh, no. Do you have your shovel? Well, I have the trowel. And do you have your bucket that your grandmother gave you? Well, yes. Then we're going to go down to that big lot um, that's in back of the hospital, down there on the corner. And that big lot used to be where the house was where I grew up in. I said, well, Grandpa, why is there a lot now? Well, they, they tore down the house, that's why. So here we would go down, walking down the sidewalk. He'd have a bucket, too. And we'd go down, and we'd find those beautiful dandelions, and he would say, now we have to dig up the dandelions. But, Grandpa, they're beautiful. I know, but we have to dig up those green dandelions and throw away the flowers. We don't keep those nasty flowers. But, Grandpa, what are we going to use them for? Well... You'll find out. Your grandmother won't like this, so we have to go in the back door. So we had buckets full of greens, as I would call them, and we take them back up to the house. We had to walk around the drive. In the back door, we would walk, and Grandma would be there standing. Gray Hickson. What are you doing now? Well, you know we have to have the dandelions, those greens, because they make the greatest dandelion wine that you've ever had. I said, Grandpa, did I go down there to help cut all these greens so you can make your wine? Yes, and you're not old enough to have a taste of that wine either. Sure enough, when I turned 21 and I went to visit my grandparents, the first thing I was given was dandelion wine. I don't know for those that have ever had it. It is strong, strong, and I would only take about two sips of it. And 
Grandpa, I can't do this. He says, but we took what was given to us by God and made it into something useful. Okay. He says, now it's time to go drive. I said, well, where are you driving to? We're going to drive down the highway because there's mustard in bloom. Okay, Grandpa. Now what are we going to do with mustard? Well, you know, that yellow stuff is so beautiful down the highway. And he says, it's mustard. And he says, I learn in church and in the Bible that it's the smallest of all seeds. Okay. So we would go and cut the mustard with a pair of scissors. And he said, now we're going to take it back to your grandmother. And she's going to put it in water in the middle of the table. Okay, Grandpa. Well, we walked in that back door. I still remember my grandmother saying, Gray Hickson. Why did you bring this stuff home? It's ugly. But Rhonda thought it was pretty, and she wants it in the middle of the table. And I'm, I'm going, mm, I'm not getting in this scaffold with those two. Jesus used parables to tell the people what he wanted them to do, and especially the disciples. We see parables throughout the Gospel of Mark. Always different. Mustard seed. No, there are no dandelions. But there were things that people could understand. They were part of their daily living. And as we see him, telling these stories. People understand. They have great imaginations, and they understand because they see the farmer planting those little seeds of mustard. He wants to stimulate his audience as he's telling the stories about the kingdom. So he uses all these parables. And he says, therefore, you count. Because God is in your life as you use these parables in your own life. Your life and your witness have energy now. And they value because God has filled you with grit, with grit, gifts. And he says the parables emphasize the positive part of your life. Not the negative. But the positive part, and then I thought, oh my goodness, what's grandma doing then? But if we look in this scripture today, Jesus uses two parables, only two. And he compares that mustard seed with the reign of God for the plant life, the kingdom. He says, the kingdom, we can liken the kingdom to a feature of plants that is familiar to any gardener or farmer. The gardener can put the seed in the ground, in the dirt, and they can make sure it has plenty of light. They can go out and water it. They can fertilize and back then, the only fertilizer they had was probably from the pigs. But they knew how to take care of the plants, just like we do today. If I have a plant at home, I water it. I still have a plant that I was given back in 2016. And it's still growing. And it blooms. It has seven flowers on it now which I think is a miracle. I guess my husband doesn't water it too much. But also the kingdom of God is like a sleeping gardener. Or perhaps the kingdom is like a gardener who slept through the growing season. And he wakes up in time for the harvest to be gathered. In case we did not quit with that message, with that parable, Jesus offers a second one. He thinks we need to listen again. The kingdom of God is like that 
mustard seed. Common for the people of the day. But like the mustard seed, the followers of Jesus in Palestine were kind of like a bunch of ragged folk full of doubts, full of fears, unable to comprehend much of what Jesus was telling them that they needed to do. If we look deep into these parables, we look at the grace of God and God's kingdom. He doesn't abuse us. He does not use negativity against us. He's very positive about who we are and what we're doing here in his kingdom. The kingdom is like this sleepy, restful trust. It is not like the busyness of works righteousness. It is not like the anxious attachment to particular doctrinal positions, defending what we believe in. No, the kingdom is like this sleepy, restful trust. Sleeping, restful trust under God's hands for each one of us. Being busy sometimes takes a lot out of us and we forget about the kingdom and about that we need to plant, we need to water, and we need to take care of each other. The harvest will come without us having to work for it because God adores us. And it is the love that is that power of growth within each one of us. I saw love and care at Vacation Bible School. Maybe Carrie didn't see it, but I did. I saw people being enthusiastic. I saw them singing and creating. And when you see people jumping up and down and excited about putting a golf ball into a red glass about this big. And then you see people throwing the football back and forth. And, I mean, it was excitable to me. Especially when I saw some people couldn't throw a football, but they managed. It, it just enthusiastic made my new word for the week. That's God's kingdom. Being enthusiastic. Doing what you can to fill people with care and love and concern. Yes, we are God's creatures. And every place we go, God is there. You remember that these parables were told to the disciples who were impatient with the slow results of their work. Even though they were new at what they were doing, they wanted action. And sometimes we become impatient as well. When we plant, when we plant a plant or we plant vegetables, can't they grow any faster? Do we have to wait for them to grow? Yes, you have to wait for them to grow. But, but mom, but grandpa, can't they grow? Nope, wait, wait, be patient. It's the same thing with us. We sometimes become impatient with others. We become impatient how time just kind of slows down. We become impatient, especially when I'm standing in line at the grocery store. Please, that's not a place for me. But if we look in scripture again, it says, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom. But for those outside, everything comes in parables in order that they may be indeed looked at, looked at and listened to. Jesus uses words of these parables to make us see what is in his kingdom. Make us alive again. 
for we sow nonstop. This is Father's Day. And I have a son that is thoroughly excited because this is the first Father's Day that he can say he's a father. And he's very proud of it. And I got sent a picture of my grandson yesterday in a brand new outfit that his father absolutely loved. I was raised by a loving grandfather who made sure I did what I needed to do. Yes, I had a father in my life, but he certainly didn't go out and do all these adventure that my grandfather decided to take me on. But we remember lessons that we have learned. We remember what we have been told by our fathers. We remember God as our father and what he has taught us every day of our lives. And I certainly remember my grandfather making me dig up those green dandelions. At least he didn't make me go and pick the elderberries off the elderberry bush so he could make elderberry wine. But he was always teaching, teaching, and he said, you will remember all these teachings the rest of your life. Sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, Fearing neither clouds nor winter's chilling breeze. By and by, the harvest and the labor ended. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith today by saying the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection, of the and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn is number 714, God of the fertile fields, it is not a hymn we knew, know, but to know the lyrics that he will be playing.
Let us pray. God of grace, the God of the fertile land, as you have blessed us today, you have blessed this church, you have blessed this community of faith. Bless, O oh Lord, these offering plates as we give to you a portion of what we have received from above. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. We do have a few prayer requests. Uh, body is still in rehab, um, so we need to uplift Bonnie and Jim. John Butzer, um, Yesterday to serve her communion, um, she's. Gracious, loving God. It is truly a day of celebration for Father's Day as 
We wish every father blessings, blessings from their children, blessings from the church. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, as we look outside, and yes, it's humid, and yes, it's hot, but yet it's another day. It's another day that we were able to get up and step out of bed and walk. It's another day, Lord, that we can give you thanksgiving. But we see the beautiful trees that give us shade. We see the ground, ground below that gives us a place to walk. And as we look up, we see an array of sunshine with warmth, with heat, with the humidity. And we give you thanks. We look and we see other people walking in our paths. We give you thanks, Lord, that there are those that walk in our paths with us are ones that we care about, that we love. And we give you thanksgiving for sisters and brothers, for spouses, for children, for grandchildren. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, this day. We pray, O oh Lord, for those that are always needing something. We pray that they may find a foundation in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They may be introduced to him and know him as we know him, Lord. O oh Lord, answer our prayers. We walk outside and we see another day. We see those standing at the street corner begging for food or begging. And sometimes all it takes is to stop and say, hello, the Lord be with you this day. You are a very gracious, loving God and you love each one of us, Lord. We never have to ask for more love. It's always there. It's a bounty of your world. Lord God, we look upon our prayer list this day. As we pray for Mary, as we play, pray for Sherry, as we pray for John and for Bonnie, and for Ruth Ann, Lord God Almighty, we lift them up to you for, for healing bodies, for healing souls, for healing love. They're in your hands. Gracious God, as we look outside into a world, we, we pray for first responders. They take care of people so much, especially when they come into an emergency room. There's been a car accident, and all we have to do is look out on 200. And we see those emergency vehicles going up and down the road all day long. Again, Lord, you heal, you bless. Gracious God, we look out into the world again and we see those that serve policemen firemen those that serve this country on board ship those that serve as missionaries in foreign lands we pray for nations may they get along with each other instead of being out in ships out in the waters of other countries, ready to take over when needed. We pray, O oh Lord, and we continue to pray for our lives, for the church. Lord God, we're not perfect at all. We ask for your grace, your grace in all that we do this day. Hear us now as we unite in prayer, praying the prayer that your son prayed with his disciples. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and sing our closing hymn, Let All Things Now Living. God is gracious, God loves us, God helps us to grow in every avenue of our lives. And we say, say thank you, Lord, today. And may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit go with you out into the world. Amen.